Over the years, Bethesda, Obsidian, and Interplay Productions have come up with some really cool concepts for vaults that allow the player to experience what it would have been like to live underground away from the nuclear war, and also experience what it would have been like to live under vault tech control. They would explore a ton of experiments, some ridiculous and some outright terrifying and brutal, and some would sadly just never really live up to the hype as their content was just lacking. However, during all the games' development, many other vaults would be made as part of game prototypes or as part of spin-off games that would continue to expand the story of vault tech. However, due to conflicting ideas or choices that went against the overall design choice of the Fallout universe, these vaults would be labelled as non-canon, unreleased ideas, and lots of them being just cut from their specific games. In this video, we look at these specific vaults, try to explain everything we know about them, what they had planned for the player, as well as what game they were linked to before they were outright cut. Today, we look at the final list of vaults. These are the non-canon and cut vaults of the Fallout universe. Vault Zero was a vault many people were commenting on in my first vault video asking why it wasn't included. Whilst Vault Zero was part of the fully released Fallout Tactics game back in 2001 by Interplay and Bethesda, its lore and everything within the game is still listed and labelled as non-canon by Todd Howard himself, mainly due to how it changes some of the things set up in previous games. Whilst not all of it is seen as non-canon, Vault Zero is listed as such and continues to be a talking point within the community about whether it should be or should shouldn't be. Vault Zero was created within Colorado and was said to be the main hub for all the vaults around the country, the nucleus of the entire vault network some would say. It was said that when the outside world needed to be rebuilt, Vault Zero with its incredible machinery would execute the Exodus Protocol, reuniting the vaults and would start taming the outside land when the atmosphere returned to stable levels again. Within Vault Zero housed an extremely important and advanced piece of equipment called the Calculator, a supercomputer that was linked to an organic brain to help it with its processing power. The calculator would ultimately run everything needed within Vault Zero and would allow it to create all the tasks it needed to to rebuild the land. Food, water, energy, life support, everything was set up so that Vault Zero could thrive and could fulfill its goal of rebuilding the wasteland. However, this sadly was not to go ahead. Before the war, the committee members responsible for the construction of the vault introduced budget cuts, with 30 voting for this and 3 opposing this. This meant that the budget for Vault Zero went from being $24 billion to $2.3 billion, with that money going back into the pockets of the committee members. With money being taken away from the vault systems and structure, the committee now decided to go a different direction, building up luxury areas such as a leisure facility, several top quality restaurants with 10,000 square feet of cold storage, seven smoke rooms with piano bars, and two subterranean hunting grounds stocked with rare animals that were bought from world-renowned zoos. This was all done because a lot of them thought the war was never actually going to come, so instead of building up shelter, they would build up their lifestyle, setting aside $12.4 billion for this. However, war did come on the 23rd of October 2077, and the committee members were caught off guard. Whilst the whole of America was turned to ash, the calculator within Vault Zero did nothing, instead went into a slumber and remained hidden underground. It wasn't until 2196 where the calculator woke back up, after a group of super mutants ventured into Vault Zero's perimeter. Believing they were foreign troops invading the US, the calculator launched the emergency pacification protocol, and met the super mutants with a heavy assault roll robot named the Behemoth and started executing them. But problems didn't stop there. Because of the budget cuts, a lot of the systems within Vault Zero started failing. Things like the backup computer systems damaged the electro-organic linking terminal, which would lead to 63% of the population dying, with 15% of them suffering life-altering brain damage, meaning they could not look after themselves. Among the dead were some of the lead scientists, the only people who could actually fix the damages caused to the Vault systems. With all of these damages, damages and system failures, the calculator started executing pacification protocol and expanding its operations out into the Buena Vista nuclear reactor complex as well as the industrial facilities in Canyon City and Great Bend. Thus began an age of extermination led by the calculator who sought to wipe out all of those who inhabited the new wasteland of America. Um. 
Back in 2007, Fallout was still looking to go down the route of a turn-based RPG like its previous games. With this, Fallout 3 was to be under development under the codename of Van Buren, with the developer being Black Isle Studios, the sister company of Interplay Entertainment, just before they went bankrupt. During Van Buren's development, a tech demo was made to showcase some of the mechanics of this game, the location within the great Midwest and Commonwealth, as well as a new vault. This vault, although it had no numbers or textures on its door, would be labelled as Vault 1, and would be used within a tutorial for the player at the beginning of the game, as well as the tech demo. Vault 1 was said to be based within a Midwestern city with an easy to access entrance in a cliffside. Vault 1 was meant to be Vault Tech's first ever vault made under Project Safehouse, and following the huge success of the Los Angeles demonstration vault. As the Great War started and the bombs began to fall, the military would start escorting all of the nearby residents to this specific vault, with Corporal Armstrong personally escorting one individual to the shelter. But this vault was in a horrific condition as the overseer had not yet arrived with the temporary one taking their place. This temporary overseer would be known as Frank and he would struggle to maintain this vault as it constantly fought against him as he was quoted as saying, we have a whole bunch of problems, something's wrong with the generator and I can't fix it because I'm locked out. I went to go get the floating eye bots to fix it but something's wrong with him too. Ultimately within this vault nothing worked, the life support systems were down, generators could not supply enough power, and as quoted by Frank, the iBot was badly damaged. However, it was said that this new resident who turned up to live within the vault was able to help the residents of this vault with supplies and repair the much needed vault systems. Vault 2 is a bit of a weird vault that's only mentioned within the holotape minigame labelled Waste Lad within Fallout 76. Vault 2 was said to be a sports obsessed vault built into the cliffs and guards the way to the abandoned armory and Chairman Cheng's fortress. Whilst it's written down now where the vault is located, the only way of gaining entrance to this vault is to retrieve the lucky number 2 jersey and bring it to the vault. Once bringing it back, the Overseer will have completed their sports collection and with that, the Waste Lad will be granted free access throughout the vault. If you were to go to Vault 2, if it truly existed, you would have to be a massive sports fan, because if you aren't, you'd most likely be chucked out by their sports collection obsessed overseer. After the huge success of Fallout 1 and 2, developers 14 Degrees East started working on a new Fallout game titled Fallout Extreme that was to be published by Interplay. This was to be a first and third person tactical game looking to be set within the Midwestern branch of the Brotherhood of Steel. Here you would control a four person team and be able to switch characters at any time. However, the game never came to light as it was never officially announced and was only really shown to be a thing within 2010. Within this game, however, existed Vault 6, another vault located within the Mount St. Helens area in Washington state. But sadly, like many on this list, not much is known about Vault 6 as this game's development was very small and still not much is known about what happened during it. It's listed that there was probably an experiment within this vault, however, once again, it is unknown what exactly that was and any other information on its design, residence, population size is all unknown. One mod of Fallout New Vegas named Fallout Frontier did reveal this vault finally and placed it within Portland linking it to the quest called Vault of the Living Dead. This vault would be hard to access however with the vault door not fully opening, however the player can access it through the sewers to reveal everything that is inside. Whilst probably not containing what was meant to originally be within the vault, it is still a nice way to explore what Vault 6 could have potentially laid out to all those who entered. Vault 7 is a pretty quick one to cover and unknown really if it's canon, non-canon or just simply doesn't count in the slightest, but we're going to cover it anyway. Vault 7 was part of the board game Fallout, which was released in 2017. Here for the original game, the players are given a set narrative and can choose how they go about playing it. Vault 7 is one of those locations the player can travel to and loot and is situated in the middle of the board. Vault 7's narrative changes each game, so realistically it has no real set purpose or experiment until the game has begun. In the end, the player decides the fate of Vault 7 and what there is to explore within it. 
Sadly, once again, Vault 24 is another one where we know next to nothing about it. Only being able to acquire a Vault 24 jumpsuit within Fallout New Vegas. As much as I'd love to guess what Vault 24 had in it, other than an unmarked location, a generic vault symbol, and a jumpsuit means it is impossible to guess what it could have been made for. And for that, we just have to move on to the next vault on this list, which is Vault 39. In 2004, the Fallout spin-off game named Fallout Brotherhood is still released and was received with mixed opinions. It didn't take too long before Interplay decided it was going to work on its follow-up game to it, which would continue that story. However, the same year, Fallout Brotherhood of Steel 2 was cancelled, and with it, Vault 39 was removed from the universe. Vault 39 was to be known as the Lone Star Vault, or the old Abilene Vault located within the area known as Abilene before the Great War. Sadly, the experiment going on with in the vault is unknown. However, like Vault 22 and 94, it would appear it was something similar to this, as the vault is now like a jungle, with huge mutated plants that take over everything in their way. Within this vault also lies a Garden of Eden creation kit, which can still be accessed as well as access to a nearby shed which contains information on the tribe known as the Jackals, as well as their leader named Banshee. But the most important thing about this vault and its nearby shed was that it contained a map that had all the key brotherhood of steel locations. Vault 39 would have been a key location within this adventure that would have expanded on the Brotherhood of Steel story. However, due to yet another cancelled game, we may never get to visit the jungle, plant-infested world of Vault 39. Another vault based on the Fallout board game, this time within the Fallout New California expansion. Vault 44 was meant to be a secret section that would be used for housing dangerous creatures with robots guarding and feeding them while scientists researched them. This would have happened without the vault dwellers knowing anything about it. However, due to how much power was being used by all of the containers and machinery, things started to fail. The main vault's refrigerator failed at the start, meaning that most of the food supply ran out and went bad. Insects also started in invading the vault which ruined the rest of the food supply and making it uneatable for the dwellers. On top of all those problems, the overseer had no way of reopening the vault door, meaning that eventually all of the vault dwellers would perish inside. Some of the scientists continued their work and tried desperately to send their studies back to vault Tech, but their communication went unanswered. To this date, the creatures inside are still alive, being fed the contaminated food by the robot helpers. Vault 44 just sits there in the wasteland, waiting for someone to come and open it up once again and discover what had happened to all those living inside. Vault 65 is sadly another vault which Bethesda decided to take out of Fallout 76, but unlike Vault 63, it is not accessible at all within the game. It is unknown what Vault 65 would have had within it, as its experiments are also unknown. But one thing that is known is that it would have had a similar design to Vaults 51 and 94. It is said that feral ghouls now inhabit this vault with a glowing one roaming the areas. It could be that this vault had a generator malfunction or the door did not fully work, meaning its residents are now heavily ghoulified. But sadly, like a lot on this list, we may never know what vault Tech had planned for Vault 65 and its inhabitants. Vault 74 is another odd one as it was meant to be a vault that helped the player during the Fallout 3 GEC tutorial, a program that would allow players to create and edit their own content for the game. Whilst it never really showed up within Fallout 3, it actually turned up within Fallout New Vegas as an accessible vault that could be explored. When entering Vault 74, it is clear that it is a very small vault, only having a few rooms within it, almost as if it was catered for a few unique individuals for overseer training or something similar. It was said to house a ton of fiends now, who must have broken into the vault and taken it for themselves. However, exploring this vault it seems something else is wrong. The overseer's office is the drawing point for anyone venturing in, and when looking at the overseer's terminal it reads data log 10.44. The vault has been breached. There was not enough power to level 5. God have mercy on our souls. Whatever happened here, it was clear that the original residents did not make it, and because of it, the small Vault 74 is now home to the vicious faction of the Fiends.
Going back to the board game of Fallout is another vault, Vault 84. This vault was said to be like 101 where it would be closed almost its entirety, not allowing many insiders in at all. They did however had a trade link with another vault before that one was destroyed, meaning that they weren't completely desperate for resources. The unique thing about this vault however was that like with Vault 11, the people of this vault would have a yearly election amongst all the dwellers. However, instead of it being to see who the next overseer is to sacrifice them to keep them all alive, this time it was to get rid of the person who was deemed as the most dangerous in their community. If you were to be voted as this person, you would then be sent out of the vault by the overseer and may never return to Vault 84. The voting process would be a success, however one year that very overseer holding the voting process will be heavily scrutinised, and if documentation is found on her, she herself could be exiled from her own vault. Whilst not as bad as Vault 11, this vault would certainly make you feel extremely paranoid that people will just want to get rid of you from the community completely, meaning you could never return to your home. Again, Vaults 100 and 113 consists of no real detail as to what they housed within them. The only thing known about these vaults were that Vault 100 was to be part of Fallout 3, so most likely located within the capital wasteland somewhere, and Vault 113 was to be in Fallout 4, meaning it was to be located within the Commonwealth. However, all that remains of these vaults is a jumpsuit emote with Vault 100 on it, and a Vault 113 welcome sign graphic, meaning that at some point they were to be full vaults with quest lines, but either due to design choices or poor story, these vaults never made it into their games. Vault 113 however does appear on the Bethesda Fallout pinball table, so it does look like Vault 113 was to be a key one for Fallout 4, but sadly we will never know why it was cut or what they housed behind their vault doors. The final vault within the board game series is Vault 109. This vault was the vault that made the trade links with the people of Vault 84. However, now it is just an abandoned mess of a vault, completely closed off from the outside world. The reason for this was due to a radiation leak which was now completely surrounding the area. What caused this leak is completely unknown, but considering it is located within what looks like a crater, it could be due to a bomb that has gone off in the nearby area, like with Vault 87's area. Before this happened, Vault 109 was an extreme extremely high-end vault with most of its occupants being of the very high class. On top of this, it is heavily armoured possessing a full set of T60 power armour as well as a fat man. If someone were to heavily protect themselves from radiation, they could somehow gain access to this vault and see what has happened within, gathering precious resources along the way. Another couple of vaults that were mysteriously just cut out of Fallout 4 were vaults 117 and 121. However, the thing about these vaults were that they were shown within a documentary named The History of Bethesda Game Studios, with a map of the Commonwealth displaying the marker for Vault 117, located north of Jamaica Plain, and Vault 121 located in the same spot as where Vault 95 now lies. On top of this, concept art was released of the Vault 117 jumpsuit within the official Art of Fallout 4 book. Why these vaults were removed from the game is unknown, and why 121 was renamed as 95 seems odd, but like with Vault 113, they must have been planned out to have some sort of importance to the story or side missions within the game. But sadly, once again, they are vaults we will never probably get to see within Fallout 4. Vault 120 is probably the coolest concept for a Fallout vault that is on this list, and only recently has it been revealed what this vault was to house. In an interview in 2021, Todd Howard stated that Vault 120 was said to be located under the waves of Boston Harbor, in a rapture-style location looking out to the ocean bed. Whilst not much is known about what this vault was set out to do, it was said that outside it lived a massive sentient octopus which no doubt would have rebelled against this vault living within its space. I'd like to think that if if Vault 120 ever came to fruition, it would be run like a utopia, supposedly free from vault tech control, with a focus on science, art and business, where a man could do what he likes, and with a key focus on prosperity. However, when you look into the society more, behind that beautiful first impression is a corrupt, disturbing land where people kill each other to get what they want. Maybe one day Fallout will venture into the sea, but for now, Vault 120 was just a dream of an underwater utopia. Thank you.
The secret vault was set in the Fallout Brotherhood of Steel game located within Texas under the city of Loss and northwest of the town of Carbon. This vault had one purpose. It was to be an underground research facility where high-ranking personnel could survive the war and continue their scientific research behind the back of the Enclave and the vault experiments. But the most important bit of research going on here was the special version of the forced evolutionary virus as well as curing the side effect of being made sterile from it. The reason this was the secret vault was because as vault Tech got bigger and more recognisable, they would begin to help out with the American government and essentially be owned by them. Because of this, they wanted a way to develop advanced technologies without having to give it over to them or live within their own vault experiments. Thus, the secret vault was made. As the scientists continued their research, they would come up with new developments to the FEV, trying to match it to its original designs. However, nothing was as successful as the government's, with the secret bunkers Tesla armor being far less effective as the T-51B power armor or the Enclave variant. For a while, the secret bunker continued well. However, during their time, a civil war would break out between vault Tech scientists and Blake, the chief security officer, who believed their research on humans was completely unethical. During this battle, an explosion happened, blowing a hole within the biological center, allowing some of the rad roaches and death claws to escape, and allowing rad scorpions and rats to invade the vault. This caused a lot of residents within the vault to die due to these monsters' attacks. During this time, the master had been defeated and his former commander, Attis, now took the lead of his army. Wanting to seek out where the FEV originated, Attis took his army towards the city of Loss, where the rumors of its origins had started. Arriving at Loss, however, Attis's army got into a fight with the Church of the Lost and the Brotherhood of Steel Paladins. Within this conflict, Attis used it to search further and eventually found the secret vault, killing all of the inhabitants left in inside and taking it over. Attis desperately tried to get into the lower part of the vault, but had to deal with a lot of resistance thanks to the Church of the Lost and the Brotherhood of Steel. Eventually after this series of events, the secret vault was to be completely destroyed as a nuclear warhead was activated by an initiate of the Brotherhood. With it, all the invading forces and monsters were killed in the process, with just some of the original residents surviving, as they hid within the auxiliary vent shafts and used them to escape. Whilst this vault is not canon, it's still a pretty cool insight into another part of the FEV project and how it affected the whole of the wasteland. Yet another vault within the Brotherhood of Steel game that isn't officially canon is the Vault Prototype, which is very closely linked to the Secret Vault. This vault's origins are unknown, but it was said to be the original design for what the Secret Vault was to be, or where they would originally come up with the technology ideas and bring them to the Secret Vault before the war began. It was then discovered most likely by the head of the Brotherhood of Steel's Texas expedition, Rhombus, who went on to use it as their main base of operation in their fight against Attis and his super mutants. Within this vault still lies valuable technology such as laser grids, gun bots, functional steam pipes, radioactive drums, and working computers. While it is unsure who exactly found this vault and also why it was made, it is clear that vault Tech were extremely busy here at some point, creating a functional vault filled with technology. Either way, it's clear that without this vault, the secret vault couldn't have come to be, and now it is a dominant base of operations for the Brotherhood of still in Texas. Known only by its name really, the Burkittsville Vault is very limited on the information as no location is given for its existence and no details are listed about its experiments. Originally this vault was meant to be part of Fallout 3, with information about it within the terminal entries within Hamilton's hideaway, but these were cut from the final product. The only thing known about this vault now is that after the war when the doors were sealed shut, a group of crazed cannibals set up camp near the vault entrance and ambushed anyone who tried tried to reach it, killing them and most likely consuming them. Sadly, whilst this vault did not make it into the game, the cannibal story did happen within the game, just not with the ones that waited outside this mysterious vault known only as the Burkittsville Vault.
And the final vault on this list of non-canon and cut vaults is not just one single vault, but in fact pretty much everything within Fallout Shelter. To cover the vaults of Fallout Shelter would mean this video would have more numbers than actual words on a script. If you can think of a number, it's most likely got a vault linked to it in Fallout Shelter. For example, Vault 666 exists within its game, Vault 909, Vault 813, and the list goes on. However, as it is stated within the Fallout lore, there were officially 122 vaults created by vault Tech, so anything above that number simply doesn't exist. Whilst there are multiple quests within the game sending you to these vaults, Fallout Shelter is more like a bit of vault Tech propaganda, a way to make the vault life seem more appealing to those on the outside, where you can form a community and work together to make the world a better place. So whilst this is a pretty relaxed game to play on your phone, Fallout Shelter is absolutely not canon, and as I say, I view it more as something vault Tech would do as propaganda. Maybe controlling these dwellers on your phone is actually affecting someone in the Fallout universe. Maybe there is a vault out there that is losing tons of power, food and water because you haven't opened the app in years. Maybe this was vault Tech's plan all along and you and them are their test subjects. Just some food for thought. And there we go, those are the non-canon and cut vaults of Fallout. I know some of the ones I covered before are debatable as to whether they are official or not, but the way that they are mentioned in games such as Vault 77 having the actual vault jumpsuit in game says to me that they are linked, and I'd argue that they are canon, but that's a debate for another day. For now I hope you liked this video, and if you did why not leave a like, a nice comment and a sub if you haven't already. Check out my other playlists in the description below, and if you really really like this video then why not become a Patreon or YouTube channel member for early access on my latest videos as well as them being completely ad free and as always I'd like to thank my supporters real quick. Big thanks to our small fish guys, our big fishes Duquesne 23, Sacrum, Rhino Head, Eddie, Christopher, Andrew, Last Persona User and Arto Krem, our sharks the AVP man and Connor and our huge megalodons Sinus Jacob Garcia, Wow Such Gaming, Chernobyl Stalker, Shadow SGT and Ryan Everett. Also big shout out to our YouTube channel members, our wise ones Jambu and Fiery Italian, as well as all my amazing subscribers over on Twitch. All your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you, so thank you all so much once again. But that is all for now. Thank you for checking out this series. As I said before, I loved making it and I hope it was worth it. But yeah, thanks again and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.